Today, I figured we should do a little bit of learning, right? Because the Supreme Court has obviously been in the news for too long now, and, and it's never about anything good. They're not doing anything good. They're very quickly reversing a whole host of things. I'm talking about stuff you may or may not know already. I think when we're talking about these folks, right? We're like, how could the Supreme Court do this? How could they do this? Well, it turns out when you take a look at their history, things that they've historically stood for, things that they've said, you kind of learn a little bit more context. Not that any of it is good, but it at least helps you understand who exactly are these people making decisions. We can't vote them out. We can't vote for them. There's no term limits. And unless other branches of government decide to step in, gather enough folks to agree to remove them from court, these people aren't going anywhere. And they are quickly turning back the hands of time at an alarming rate that I didn't even know you could do so quickly, to be honest. So yeah, put on your hats, your learning hats. We're gonna be doing a big thonk today about certain Supreme Court justices and and what they're actually okay with. I probably should put a bit of a trigger warning in here right at the beginning. We're gonna be discussing like rape, I believe if I'm correct. We're gonna also be discussing bestiality. (sighs) So that's your heads up. I can nearly 100% guarantee that members of the Senate knew this information about Supreme Court justices and still confirmed them. As you know, the Supreme Court justices are meant to be impartial. They are meant to preserve the justice of the people, the law of the land of the United States, okay? According to the Supreme Court justice itself, it is equal justice under law. That's what the court is supposed to be for the record. I'm not saying that's what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and start by talking about Justice John G. Roberts. So Justice John G. Roberts is typically known on the Supreme Court right now as the swing vote. Uh, He's controversial to both sides and disappoints both sides in various ways. Uh, Not as outright horrific in the way that others are, but, but horrific all the same. So according to Britannica, nothing initially interesting here, right? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this article. Chief Justice Roberts reflects on conflicts, harassment, and judicial independence. This is an article that essentially is discussing how he acknowledges institutional challenges, but tells the public only judges can fix them. Chief Justice Roberts is taking a page from his old playbook, acknowledging institutional challenges in the judiciary, but telling the public that only we judges can fix them. And then it continues to say, Yet the problems of overlooked financial conflicts and sexual harassment are so serious and endemic that there's no indication they're going away. So Congress has every right to step in and via legislation, hold the third branch to account, which I expect to happen in 2022. Now, of course, here we are in the middle of 2022, Congress not really holding much into accountability if we're gonna be quite honest. So that kind of falls a little bit on deaf ears. These justices are knowingly breaking laws. And he just says it's fine because it's less than 1% of cases, which is essentially the whole thing to unpack about what's in this article. Now, here's the reality. Even if it is less than 1% of cases, that isn't something that should be excused, especially if you are someone who's part of the court system, you know, the, the moral authority of the rules and the laws of the land. But that's his point of view. I think there's other justices I I have a disdain for more, but I understand the sentiment. Yeah, so everyone hates him, apparently. This is just beautiful, this setup here. Chief Justice Roberts, lifelong crusade against voting rights. And they kind of break it down because if you look through this guy's voting history, he's never really been for like people, like giving a shit about people. If you've ever looked at how this guy consistently rules and judges, he at least has a consistency in that regard. Unfortunately, It's not a good consistency. A little bit of background, he's upset. Let's read this, shall we? Because I think that little top part's important to know why he's upset. The House had recently passed legislation extending the Voting Rights Act of 1965, a seminal civil rights bill that dismantled much of Jim Crow and shoring up one of its key provisions after a 1980 Supreme Court decision that had severely weakened the law. Meanwhile, the filibuster-proof majority of the Senate had co-sponsored the same bill. Does that help put into perspective just a hair as to how this justice feels about human rights? This This is what he's about. And here, Robert's early crusade against voting rights ended in failure. Though President Reagan preferred a weaker voting rights law, 
He once described the Voting Acts right as humiliating the South. That is who is one of our Supreme Court justices. Why would the Voting Rights Act be humiliating, you might say? Is it because perhaps you don't believe that black folks are human? Could that be the problem? Okay, Bill of Rights. This comes from the whitehouse.gov for the record. So again, it's been digitized and all that good shit. So the first amendment provides that Congress makes no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise. It protects freedom of speech, the press assembly, and the right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So there it is right there about religion. You cannot respect an establishment of religion, which means you cannot give it favorability, but you also cannot prohibit it from being a church too, which means you can't you can't discriminate against a church, but you also cannot respect it, or in other words, you cannot favor it. So by turning over a human right, the right to medical privacy and the right to choice, that is now in fact favoring one particular religious belief, and that is Christian belief, which is a direct violation of the First Amendment. Now let's move on to everyone's favorite Supreme Court justice, shall we? Let's talk about Clarence Thomas. This guy is the one who's got some fucking skeletons in his closet. The stuff I gave the trigger warning for earlier, that's for him. I'm posting it again right here to let you know it's gonna be bad. This motherfucker right here, who's okay with overturning, Roe v. Wade obviously voted for it. In his opinion piece, voted to overturn the contraceptive rights, rights for LGBT, and rights for LGBT to get married. So not only just to date the person, but for marriage. Do you know what rule he interestingly enough left out? He left the ruling out of what we should reconsider around interracial marriage. And do you know why that is? His wife, Ginny, is white. So it wouldn't benefit him to overturn interracial marriage. Everything else doesn't matter. And his wife's too fucking old where contraception doesn't fucking matter to her anymore because she is most certainly post-menopause. So it doesn't matter about overturning contraception because it doesn't apply to him because he can bone that fucking graveyard all he wants. Back in 1991 was accused of sexual harassment by an employee, but was still placed in his position of power. Also, as I've just briefly mentioned, there is some extremely concerning activities from his wife with stop the steal texts that are being investigated. Let's talk about Anita Hill, a name you may or may not know. Let's talk about it because Anita Hill is the person who spoke out against him in 1991 saying why he should not be a Supreme Court justice. And she had a lot to say and Anita Hill was ignored. Anita Hill was grilled by a committee of 14 men chaired by then Senator Joe Biden. And Joe Biden won with a 52 to 48 vote. So he barely made it in and Hill, went home like they say here, condemned by many and facing death threats, but she stepped forward either way. He asked me to go out socially with him. I declined the invitation to go out socially with him and explained to him that I thought it would jeopardize at what at at the time I considered to be a very good working relationship. I had a normal social life with other men outside of the office. I believe then as now that having a social relationship with a person who was supervising my work would be ill-advised. I was very uncomfortable with the idea and told him so. I thought that by saying no and explaining my reasons, my employer would abandon his social suggestions. However, to my regret, in the following few weeks, he continued to ask me out on several occasions. He pressed me to justify my reasons for saying no to him. These incidents took place in his office or mine. They were in the form of private conversations, which not, would not have been overheard by anyone else. My working relationship became even more strained when Judge Thomas began to use work situations to discuss sex. On these occasions, he would call me into his office for reports on education issues and projects, or he might suggest that because of the time pressures of his schedule, we go to lunch to a government cafeteria. 
After a brief discussion of work, he would turn the conversation to a discussion of sexual matters. His conversations were very vivid. He spoke about acts that he had seen in pornographic films involving such matters as women having sex with animals and films showing group sex or rape scenes. He talked about pornographic materials depicting individuals with large penises or large breasts involved in various sex acts. On several occasions, Thomas told me graphically of his own sexual prowess. Because I was extremely uncomfortable talking about sex with him at all, and particularly in such a graphic way, I told him that I did not want to talk about these subjects. I think that was important for you to hear. That is talking about Justice Clarence Thomas. Not only overturned, Roe v. Wade was real happy about it and said that that's not even enough. That woman, Anita Hill, received death threats for speaking her truth about his disgusting behavior. He doesn't wanna overturn Virginia v. Loving because again, that made interracial marriage legal because his wife, Ginny, the fucking traitor, is white. So that affects him. So he doesn't wanna overturn that, but overturn rights for the gays, overturn rights for women. Well, he's not a woman, he's not gay. So none of that matters to him. So here, in case you guys don't know, Here's Dear Miss Ginny, insurrectionist queen with Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who wants to turn over every fucking right except the right to interracial marriage because that one would affect him personally. So Virginia Thomas, Ginny, uh, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas for the first time has publicly acknowledged that she participated in the January 6, 2021 Stop the Steal rally on the eclipse that preceded the storming of the Capitol by a pro-Trump mob raising questions about the impartiality of her husband's work. Well, 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 what have we there in the very first fucking paragraph? About as good of a photo as we're gonna get of this damp paper towel of a human. LGBTQ rights in 2017, the Supreme Court summarily overruled the Arkansas Supreme Court decision to deny same-sex parents the same right to appear on a birth certificate. I remember that he wrote in the dissent joined by Thomas and Alito, arguing that the court should have fully heard the arguments of the case. What part of that was fucking confusing? We are gonna talk about Kavanaugh on my little my little listy. Kavanaugh is next. So yeah, so he was against uh, same-sex parents having the right to appear on a birth certificate. Then in a ruling 6-3, he joined Chief Justice Roberts and the four Democratic appointees arguing that it improperly extended the Civil Rights Act to include sexual orientation and gender identity. So let's see here on abortion. In 2018, Gorsuch dissented with the court and voted against hearing cases brought by the states of Louisiana and Kansas to deny Medicaid funding to Planned Parenthood. He and Alito joined Thomas's dissent, arguing that it was the court's job to hear the case. So they were chomping at the bit in 2018 for this. We're gonna be discussing sexual misconduct. So let's talk about Justice Kavanaugh, because I remember these hearings quite fucking clearly, unfortunately. So this motherfucker uh, is appointed by Trump. So Brett Kavanaugh, Supreme Court justice nominee is facing multiple allegations of sexual assault. These three women came forward, have accused him of sexual misconduct in high school and college, and an anonymous allegation has also surfaced. So we've got four people speaking up and saying, this motherfucker has in fact harassed me sexually. So the Washington uh, Post published an article that identified Ford as the accuser and detailed her allegations that a stumbling drunk 17 year old Kavanaugh pinned her down put his hand over her mouth and groped her while his friend watched. But yeah, boys will be boys. He just likes beer. And all of us women are just fucking hysterical because what's a little grab in by the pussy anyway, right? Yeah, we should just know that men are just gonna do that. And we just have to deal with it, right? God's sake, I hate people. Uh, another one, Deborah Ramirez, a former Yale University classmate of Kavanaugh said that Kavanaugh exposed himself to her at a dorm room party in the 1983, 1984 school year when he was a freshman. So this would have been a year after this other girl. Julie Swetnick says Kavanaugh was present at 1980s party where she and other women were gang raped together. So Julie signed in a sworn declaration alleging that she witnessed Kavanaugh and judge display abusive and physically aggressive behavior towards girls during a series of house parties in the 1980s where the boys would spike punch with drugs and alcohol to cause girls to lose their inhibitions or ability to say no. Swetnick alleges that this was done so that girls would be gang raped by a train of boys and that she was one of such victims. 
I have a firm recollection of seeing boys lined up outside rooms at many of these parties waiting for their turn with a girl inside the room. So let that one sink in. He also has a history of absolutely loathing abortion, which I'm sure is shocking to nobody. Now let's talk about uh, our next little darling, Amy Barrett. Amy Coney Barrett served as a handmaid in a Christian group, People of Praise. Now that's quite an interesting article, isn't it? A 2010 People of Praise directory states that she held the title of handmaid, a leadership position for women in the community, according to a directory excerpt obtained by the Washington Post. Also while in law school, Barrett lived at the South Bend home of the People of Praise's influential co-founder, Kevin Rannigan, and his wife, Dorothy, who together helped establish the group's male-dominated hierarchy and view of gender roles. Madness. This is madness. We've covered cults and shit before, and she's in our government right now. Unsurprisingly, obviously voted to overturn the right to medical privacy that was granted through Roe v. Wade. So let's talk about some of her issues. Take policing. And this is written in 2020, the article, by the way. In the case of Tory et al. v. City of Chicago et al., she concluded that officers were reasonable in stopping and harassing a group of black men, even though there was absolutely no evidence that they had committed a crime. She does not give a shit about anyone who is, who is not a white man or a white Christian. I absolutely do believe her views are racist. These this is ridiculous. She does not and has never given a shit about anyone's fucking rights. Samuel Alito was in fact, by the way, the author of the draft opinion striking down Roe v. Wade. So the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, ending right for abortion upheld for decades. So writing for the court majority, Justice Samuel Alito said that the 1973 Roe ruling and repeated subsequent high court ruling decisions affirming Roe must be overruled because they were egregiously wrong and the arguments exceptionally weak and so damaging that they amounted to an abuse of judicial authority. This little nugget right here that I've highlighted, this is what people who tell others to be like, shut up, this doesn't involve you. This is a women's issue, blah, 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 blah. This is the part they don't understand. Roe v. Wade was certainly in part about abortion, but what the court ruled about the Roe v. Wade decision was that this was about your right to medical privacy and to make protected decisions between you and your doctor about what's best for you they pretty much said to go fuck yourselves because they go, no, 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 this is fine, but it's not. This is the beginning of everything else unraveling because the truth is about the pro-life movement is it's a pro-birthing movement. And once you're born, you don't matter anymore. We have gone through the skeletons inside these people's closets. And these are the people who are overturning the rights for Americans to actually be free. 